What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ninja Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we have been waiting for this moment for quite some time, Brian. Ever since it was announced and it was rumored, Brian, I was like, why? But they find it, like you said, Brian, you read a story that they said that they, 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 they did it. What we thought could, n- could not be done from a movie that was already considered a classic to go ahead and do a sequel to that and make it Terminator 2-esque, right? Then we get the trailer, Brian. And Brian... I'll go back to the reference that I made to you, Brian, a long time ago. Somewhere in time, Christopher Reeve and Jane Seymour. If you haven't seen the movie, go check it out. It's a love story. It's kind of weird in the sense of how it could occur, but it was interesting nonetheless. And just to spoil it, he had to hypnotize himself into believing that he was in the past. And how he was um, taken out of that trance when was once was when he was reminded of the time that he was in when he saw a penny, Brian, and it told him the year that he was in. Then it went back. He went back to his where he was. Brian, when I started hearing the music of this film, Brian, and this is prior to when we start when I started watching the trailer, Brian. I was fine. I was like, okay, okay. And then the music hits, Brian, and I'm taken away. I went back to the first trailer, the Gladiator trailer, Brian. I'm sure many people did as well. And there were people in the comments that wrote, we know why you're here. (laughs) The music that they chose to sort of end this trailer with, Brian, it seems like it goes through some sort of processor that it has to go through this um, person who does this trailer and it has to throw in modern music into this somehow. And it ruined the experience and I'm sure it ruined the experience for everyone who watched it, Brian. It's been, that's what everybody's been talking about as of late. Your thoughts, Brian, on once you saw it, Brian, and did you have the same reaction? Uh, Yes. Uh, I think my problems with the trailer start before Church in the Wild makes an appearance, the Kanye West, Jay-Z track that everyone's talking about. Um, it is, I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a geek for trailers and trailer music. Um, mm-hmm. uh, that's your, your, you're kind of getting into a little bit of my wheelhouse here. Mm-hmm. I generally have found it disappointing and annoying that the, the chic thing to do with most trailers these days is to do a cover of a song you know as opposed to finding actual score either that sets the mood for the type of movie and the type of story you want to tell so for example to your point the original teaser now this is three minutes worth of a teaser but the original teaser for the russell crowe gladiator is only about 90 seconds Mm -hmm. and they use the uh, one of the great scores of all time, which is the opening theme from Conan the Barbarian. And it's been edited and chopped up a little bit. Ooh, okay, but okay. That, if you've ever seen the opening credits of Conan the Barbarian, that's the song that plays as the sword is being forged. Um, Conan's Got father's it. sword. And it's it lets you know immediately that that movie is serious. It lets you know that Gladiator 1 is serious, it's relentless, it's dark, it's intense, and that's the point of the music. But... This has become, to your point, very formulaic. You often see like a little bit of instrumental and then you pick your cover. And that's kind of what most trailers do these days. I don't really know why. There's every once in a while that it works. Um, If you want to see an example of a trailer where it works pretty well recently, it's actually there's a trailer for The Wild Robot, which is an animated movie of a kid's classic. And the first trailer uses a remix of Louis Armstrong's What a Wonderful World, but digitized into almost like a robot's voice. It actually is a beautiful trailer. I think that movie for kids and families is going to be great. That's an example where it can work. Mm -hmm. But what I don't understand is Gladiator 1 not only is a Best Picture winner, it's an award-nominated, award-winning score. You have the music from Hans Zimmer sitting right there. 
don't you want to echo and make people recall the themes and the greatness of the first film by using his music in the second trailer? It's the easiest thing you could possibly do. And they choose right. not to do it. Right, but they go out of their way, not necessarily to sort of shoot the film similarly, but Brian, but a lot of the shots are very similar. Why not use some of the same music you used before to take us back to that time? And if there were to be a surprise music, the, the new leads own music, right? In the film. But you got to do this, yo? Like what? Like really, is there is there a guy that that has it, that these that they call for these music for 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 these movies? So the short be, answer right? is yes. So the short answer is yes. There are companies that do nothing but this, and there are production companies that write music and remix music that is precisely for this reason. Some of it's on Spotify these days. Some of it's on YouTube. Um, but it's an interesting comparison. We, we we've been talking about this a lot with Superman of this idea of. For modern Superman, James Gunn Superman, <clears throat> we don't want to hear the John Williams score. But the reason for that is because that movie is trying to chart a new course, a new yeah. iteration of the character. This movie needs to bring you back to the spirit of the original. Therefore, yeah. I would argue the opposite is true. You should be using Hans Zimmer's themes to make people remember what they loved about, part of what they loved about the first one. Yeah. Um, so I think, yes, the soundtrack to me was a fail from the very beginning. Um, and it was very disappointing to, to hear that choice. However, I was overall disappointed. And the other thing that I would say, and I don't know what your thoughts were, but I went back and I, when I watched that first Gladiator trailer, it's very focused. You know exactly what that movie is trying to tell you, right? The, the tagline, right? The general who became a slave, who became a gladiator, who defied, a, who defied an empire. And then the only line I think you hear Russell Crowe speak in the trailer is, in this life or the next, I will have my vengeance. Perfect. Like, yeah, yeah. sleek. Like, you, it looks cool, and you're like, this is a very, very focused revenge story. Yes. You know, involving loss and really cool visuals. Yes. I found myself kind of confused by this trailer. There was a lot going on, and, we, and a lot of visuals that looked really cool, as I expect Ridley Scott epics to look. But it did not seem to me nearly as focused in terms of its purpose as I hoped it would be for the sun. Force people to sort of ask more questions than sort of, I guess, wait on this movie. Because my, my wife was already telling me what this movie's about. And, and, and she, you know, she just saw the trailer like, whose son is this guy? You know what I'm saying? Who's who's father was lucius you know so listen <clears throat> by the way to, mm -hmm. and i think i think your wife is spot on i was surprised there was no fade cut of the kid from the first one into paul mescal to really remind people this is who you're dealing with because yeah, that's like, not like a super well-known kid yeah you could you could have used the same joint like are we going back to flashbacks really like I would have actually had the face of the kid from the first one, and actually then just faded it into Mescal, yeah, and then people they, would have immediately they, known. Same guy, great. Yeah, now I know yeah. who I'm dealing with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't blame her. I think there's a lot of people who are still confused as to who Paul Mescal is actually playing. I have a lot of concern, Brian, that this movie may have a lot of executives. Uh, I know Ridley Scott does his movies the way he wants to do it, Brian, but. This to me, with the music choice, sh sort of tells me that this isn't Ridley Scott's movie. More, a lot more yeah. say than just Ridley Scott's for this movie, you know? Could be. I mean, I think also Ridley Scott is one of, he's a, he, you know, we criticize Zack Snyder for director's cuts and Ridley Scott is another one of these directors that likes to tinker and often edits and re-edits and redoes his movies. And sometimes that works really well and sometimes it doesn't. You know, as we said, like Kingdom of Heaven is the one I point to where that's a very average theatrical cut, but the director's cut is incredibly good and an almost completely different film. This movie to me almost has a feel of going in that direction or even like the theatrical cut of Kingdom of Heaven, there's some spectacular set pieces. But the movie is so chopped up in the theater, it kind of doesn't make any sense. I hope it isn't this, the case, though, Brian. It it feels that it feels like there's a lot going on, right? There's like 
there's like really cool water scenes in the galley. Then there's like this Coliseum mm. stuff. And then I got to throw this out there because I texted you this training day ancient Rome. I don't know that that's what we're going for, but there was a lot of Denzel doing his Alonzo Harris. Right? <laughs> exactly. That's what it felt like. Am I wrong? Like, is that what he was doing? You can go and do a montage of that same shot. But that was an American gangster. When he was saying uh, soul brother. Yeah, he, he does that handshake deal. with yes, the laugh. Yes, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Ten times in his career. I was like, okay, so he's just kind of going to be Denzel, I guess, but wearing a toga. Yeah. And I don't know that that was what I case, thought. Brian. Yeah. I hope that's not the case. But that's we'll what see. the trailer pitched. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the trailer kind of made it clear to me that they don't trust Meskel to headline the movie because there's a lot of Denzel. The trailer is really Denzel centric, even though Meskel's the lead. Yeah. Whereas the original trailer had other famous actors in the movie, but there was no question from the get-go that Russell Crowe was a star. Now, Russell Crowe already was a major star by the time Gladiator came out. I mean, he had been nominated for an Oscar in The Insider, um, so he was already hot. But it was interesting to me that they basically were like, hey, did you know Denzel's in our movie? Hey, did you know Denzel's in our movie? That was seemed to be a lot of the point of this trailer, and I don't know that that was the best decision. Yeah. He does look cool. I mean, Denzel is always, you know, a, a character. You want to see wh how different he plays his character or how cool he plays his character. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm a bit concerned, Brian, that this movie yeah. may not live up to what we hope uh, it can be in terms of story. I'm not too concerned with set pieces, Brian. I know he's good with that. Yeah, and, and the shots we get of, like, the Coliseum with the beasts and, like, there's one of the Coliseum flooded, I think, with like mm -hmm. crocodiles in. I mean, there's some crazy stuff where you're like, okay, that's gonna look very cool because that's really Scott and, and he's in his bag. But will it make sense when I'm watching it? I don't know. Here's the thing, Brian. It's like I'm almost I almost feel like we 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 we, we watching a redo or a remake, sort of, of this uh of Gladiator almost. But like riffs on the characters, right? Because it's like the Oliver Reed yeah. character is Denzel, right? Oliver yeah, Reed in the first yeah, one was yeah. the former gladiator who retired and won his freedom. And right, that's clearly Denzel. He's the retired gladiator. Mm -hmm. But then it's also like, you know, it was almost like someone said, you know, it would be better than one Commodus. What if we had two Commoduses? Because <laughs> there's two crazy looking weirdo albino emperors going on in this, <laughs> right? And that's kind of what they have. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I was like, so we're going to get someone we really don't care about in these two guys, right? They're just going to be the evil guys. It's, it, you know, comedy is sort of like, Joaquin Phoenix killed that role, man. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I make fun of that, that, that he sleeps so well because he's loved. <laughs> <laughs> But this movie has to make, right? So the whole point of the end of the first one, in theory, is that Russell Crowe's victory over Commodus paves the way for Rome to go back to being a republic. That's the whole point of the ending. If we are now 20 years later, and we've basically backpedaled fully into the tyranny of these two emperors, and Meskel effectively has to do what Russell Crowe did to upend the empire again, then this movie is challenged with making us believe why that's necessary. Like, how did we get there? Because the whole point of the first one was that we were going to go in this new, more hopeful, more democratic direction. And the trailer makes clear that's not what happened. So how how, how did that get subverted? Well, he's going to be fighting his, uh, the general, the new general, right? I Are you sure that's the villain? Because there's clearly a scene at the very end of that trailer where it looks like he's about to cut his head off. And I'm like... I don't know. I feel like Pedro Pascal is being dangled to us as the main villain, and maybe he's not. Because they showed an awful lot of that, what would be the final battle, right? Of them fighting? In the trailer? If so, that's a lot of giveaway. Yeah. It's concerning, Brian. That's what it, it is. is. I'm with you. I was like, I had these individual flashes of like brilliance, and I will absolutely go see it, but it felt like it felt like expensive train wreck more than expensive classic. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what, what you guys think. I mean, every I mean, you you've listened to many podcasters and other people react similarly 
to what they did with the trailer for Gladiator 2, most most notably the music choice. Uh, but are you concerned is the question of how good Gladio Gladiator 2 can be. I just feel like we're not getting purely a really Scott film. I'm getting, I feel like we're getting a studio film um, that won't, uh, that will be more spectacle than story. I think that's a good summation. And if the studio put nearly $400 million into it, then they might, get what they, they, might, they might be getting what they deserve if this thing doesn't turn out uh, to the level we hope it can. Yeah, let us know in the comments below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nigeria Report. The show goes on! Yeah!